Well, good evening and welcome to the preview for uh, the Gravel Card Sunday, the 11th of April. And I'll be doing this the evening before as well because I'll tee off early again tomorrow. Club Championships, which uh, was uh, okay today. Shot just over my handicap and uh, played reasonably well. But uh, I attribute this to um, uh, th this uh, preview and my time on television today to Rachel Blackmore, the uh, champion Irish rider who just won the Grand National, was one of the gr best riders you've ever seen. You saw Cheltenham, she won all those big races, she did it. She's just a superstar. Rides horses beautifully, she's got lovely hands, she just gets a tune out of them and it's just so wonderful to see someone that is that good on a, on a racehorse. And, um, she deserves the Grand National well done to her. So um, let's look at this card. It's an eight race program and the 22 bed promenade, 8.5 meter false rail, which means that uh, they could get away. Sorry for the color changes, but uh, the television's going and I'm watching the Masters at the same time. But as I say, I've got an early start. So um, forgive me if there's a lot of changes before tomorrow, but I have worked out the card. Uh, race one. Uh, 1245 1400 meter race and it's an absolute two-cornered contest miss jacqueline number one sean veal two very good runs and um uh, for the very informed mike miller stable should go really well and then the danger or the horse that's an eight to ten favorite is kaylee number four lyle hudson for glenn godson a very good run in cape town and now uh, comes back here uh, to get ready for the big Durban season. So they only come here if they're fancied. A horse that might cause an upset for your trifectas and quartets is C. Cruz, number 10 on the card. Colleen Story gets a chance on Doug Campbell's runner. Much better suited to this type of trip. But quite a nice looking filly, C. Cruz. I expect it to, to go well. Race two, maiden plate, 1400 meters. And I'm going strongly with number one, Final Destiny. I think he's absolutely. Cherry Ripe ready, gets Luke Ferraris, gets a draw. I think the course will suit him. Lots to like about him. The big improver might be West Point, Richard Foree, number eight on the card for G Gareth Van Zale. And um, take a look at his comments. He's quite um, uh, open to the way he feels his horses will run and puts them all over social media. So have a look at his comments before you make a decision, but he might be a big danger there. Race three. Conditional progress. I don't know why you would have a conditional progress, but there you have it. Um, and there's 1,600 meters and two horses warming up for the big season. I think they'll fight it out. Seventh gear, number one, and Wild Coast, number four. Uh, I, I'm going slightly with seventh gear. He gets two kilos from Wild Coast. They're both four-year-olds. They both, both got pretty similar um, profiles. Uh, shareholder, I, I don't know what they're doing with this horse. They come back to a mile now. What is the point of that? This horse patently stays. Um, they tried him over more ground. He ran on really well. Both times he's run over more ground. Back to a mile in this type of field. I certainly wouldn't be running in there. Anyway, that's where he is. Maiden plate, uh, 1600 meters, race four. And um, this is quite tricky. Uh, Ruby Sky, very good run, gets Warren Kennedy from pole position, number one on the card. Uh, Diamonds and Toads, I've always thought that this filly could run a bit, and uh, Sean Veal picks up the ride for the Miller stable, and I think that she'll go well here. Rain Wears, your favourite, number eight on the card. Tony Riblin, Stuart Randolph run two very good runs. Highborn, this is the key horse. Very, very nice first run. Go back and have a look. Soft ride will definitely, definitely improve and looks like it can go really well here. Um, so that's the big danger. And then Laurel Lane and Emerald Isle are both drawn in the bush. That's not going to help them, although Laurel Lane does get Luke Ferraris. Race five, maiden plate fillies and mares that go um, a thousand meters. And I'm going strongly with number one, what a splash. I think there's the right horse. Off the draw, Michael Robinson's horse. Looks like she's got some ability. She hasn't put a foot wrong so far and probably be good enough to win a maiden like this. Uh, what else is there? Well, the, the horse that ran a fair race is Leopard Lady. Didn't run a bad race at all. And I expect this to go well for Nicholas Patel and MJ Woodendahl. MJ Woodendahl has improved Nicholas Patel's riding no end. So very nice to see. Serena Slam. Um, it might be the result horse, but bad draw is not going to help her, uh, certainly with an eight and a half meter false rail. 
Race six, fillies and mares, 68. Well, you know these races are very difficult. I like Rice. I liked her last time, but I think she's cherry ripe now, and she's drawn one with Lyle Hudson. And interesting that he stuck with her, so that gives you a very good clue as to her chances. Q for you, number three, and Mission Beach, number six, both come into the race with a chance. But the big danger to rise is number 11, Sacred Ibis. Um, got a very nice form. Luke Ferraris for golf puller. Pity about the white draw, but she does come from off them, and I expect her to go well here. Race seven, graduation handicap, 1,400 meters. Another absolute anomaly to have a graduation handicap. Makes no sense at all. And as a result, it's extremely difficult to work out what comes well into a race like this. But um, you'd think Purple Moons Up is probably the best in in this race. Although a uh, point of sale has got to give uh, Purple Moons Up uh, about nine kilos, which uh, certainly brings uh, Purple Moons Up into the race. Muzieni for Alison Wright. State of mind, the other three-year-old's got to get to give two kilos to Purple Moons Up, and she's got to have a, a big chance as well. Um, of the rest of them, maybe Love Bomb if she's ready, but I don't know if she's ready. Uh, Purple Persuasion might improve, and Jack's Bird goes a bit on the poly. Race 8, Mary Raid 72, 1400. Well, I find a few of these lately, and you know, I find these big price horses, and they win, or they certainly run well, and I'm hoping the same will happen here with number 1 Palace Wind. I liked him a bit last time. Uh, he didn't really get into the race. I think this is going to be much better for him. I expect him to go really well here, Palace Wind, and um, expect him to be a big player. Of the rest, well, anything can win it. There are a lot of maiden winners. Tom Bombadil might be a big improver at 14 to 1, but I'm going to go with Palace Wind at the last race. From me, James Goodman, and the whole Interbet team, remember you can bet in play on the Masters. Uh, which is great because you can see how players are playing and how they're going. A guy like John Rahm, he doesn't seem to be in it. His uh, mind is obviously on his new baby. Uh, ha Tyrell Hatton's completely lost it. Adam Scott had a few bad breaks. Uh, now we're getting to see the big shots and see how they go. Not very easy. And wa fun watching these guys battle around this golf course. Have a good one and I'll be with you again next week.